So if people could be moving towards seats, that would be lovely. You get to see some filming from outdoors, outside church here. You don't have to be quiet for one minute, 11 seconds. Well, welcome to church this Mothering Sunday, this Mother's Day. It's so lovely to see so many people here today. Uh, We apologize for those who are joining us online for the late start because we've been enjoying tea, coffee, and pastries here in church. We've also had a little bit of a quiz going on, Uh, a quiz to find out who has the oldest mother here, still alive, still with us. Who was it? Was it Muriel? No. Well, my ancient ancestor is 96. So my dear mother is 96. So did we have anything higher than 96? No? All right. So, and then the person who has the most children... I got, what did you think? Aileen. Aileen's mum had 10. Oh, right. Which beats Muriel, who's here in church, is seven, a mere seven. (laughs) 10. One of, oh, gosh. Fantastic. Your mum was one of 10. Wow. (laughs) Right. And then there were the funniest stories about mums. Well, I'm sure you can uh, tell those and, uh, around and keep those going. So that's what we've been doing while we've been enjoying our tea and coffee here. Uh, today we are giving thanks for mums, and we're also remembering mums who are sadly not with us anymore, and just celebrating all those who mother us, because you don't actually have to be a mum to be mothering and uh, That's what we're thinking of today. So let's thank God for all the good things he gives us, especially for those who care for us today. Let's have a short prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this Mothering Sunday and for your love for us all. Thank you for those who offer us mother love. And we give thanks to you and for them. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to start with a a very active song called I Will Sing Hosanna. And uh, the verses sort of tell you to wave. So we hope people will wave, tell you to clap, tell you to give it a bit on dance. And then when it says praise, well, that's just free for all. Do whatever seems most appropriate. And then when it says dancing round before the throne of glory, you could even just do that bit. Dancing round before the throne of glory. It's up to you. Please stand. Oh, I will sing.
we stay standing to sing, give thanks to the Lord our God and King. His love endures forever. We're now going to watch a, a short video of uh, people just thanking their mums that Steph has compiled for us. What would you like to thank your mum for? Just to be my mum because I couldn't have had a better one. For bringing me into this world and taking me to places. I, I would like to thank, thank my mum for always being there. For keeping me healthy with all my food and persuading me to brush my teeth every time I don't want to. For teaching us how to cook and how to clean a house properly and uh, how to love one another. What would you like to thank your mum for? I love. Being my mum. When we go shopping, she buys me new toys. I'd like to thank my mum for treating me the same as my brother. For playing nice games with me. She was always there for me and a very good listener whenever I got upset. All the food she makes to help me stay alive. I'd like to thank my mum for always being there for me, even though she wasn't always at home. I'd also like to thank her for um, taking me to church on a Sunday. For like, taking care of me and like helping me when I want something. I would like to thank my mum for teaching me how to spell and how to read. Who would you like to thank who helps to look after you? My 
mum, my dad and my auntie. Well, me and my mum like to go out on special times, like on, on a jog or to like, um, I don't know, some sort of play centre. Uh, the thing was that she brought us basically up on her own because my dad was in the concentration camps and though he survived it and married my mum, he only lived until I was three. Uh, so she did a, an amazing job, really. What does your mum do to show that she loves you? Do stuff for me. Um, cooking nice meals all the time. She's shown her love. By just being my best friend. Uh, she gives me lots of hugs. Um, I didn't have anything to wear and I was going to college in Manchester the next day. And my mother sat up all night altering one of her dresses into a, a sort of a dress for me to go to college. Because whenever she's ill, she always looks up and gives me smiles. Uh, she always had time for me. Uh, not only when I was a child, but as I got older and had kids of my own. Giving me a hug. She used to hug me. Every time like I'm really mad, she just like tells me to like take a deep breath. Be devoted to the family. By helping me through sad times. She gave me lots of hugs and she baked cakes for when I got home <laughs> from school. I like to go to cafes with her and I just like to spend time with her really. Thank you mum. 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 Thank you, Mum, for all you did for me and all that you still mean to me. Thank you, Mum, for all the love you give us all over these years to all the family and now I pass it on to mine. Well, thank you, Steph, for that great compilation. <clears throat> and to all of those who contributed to it. I hope that's got us thinking about being thankful to our mums. But what we're going to have now is a, a quieter moment. There are going to be little red hearts passed out amongst you. And uh, the idea is, is that if you want to write uh, some thoughts down about your mum, you can do that. If your mum is sadly no longer with us, you might just want to write her name and just think about her for a moment. Or... Perhaps, for a few people, they didn't have someone to be a mum to them around. And they might want to think of others who offered them mother love and mother care as they were growing up. So just spend a moment do that, doing that. And while you're thinking about it, the musicians will start playing. <laughs> and then when you've had a good think about it, you're to fold it in half and bring it forward and place it into the water on either side here. And I believe a folded in half one should float like a boat and then gently open up. Is that folded in three? All oh, right, come and demonstrate, Steph. I can't see from here because I haven't got one to fold in three. Steph will show you how to fold. <laughs> it's not going to be too complicated. So you just fold once you've written on it. Fold it there, there, and there. And then when you put it in, when you put it in the water, it should open out.
Oh, I can see the hearts opening out. Isn't that lovely? And the love that's there expressed. Let's uh, have a short prayer now. Dear God, we thank you for mums. And we remember and give thanks for those mums who are no longer with us. We thank you for those who brought us comfort in life. And give us tender care just like you do. So thank you, God, for our mums and for all those who offer mother's love to us. Amen. We now have a, a treat of uh, some young people coming to do our Bible reading for us. So that's Caden, isn't it? Is it Jessica as well? Oh, well, they're... Caden, Izzy, and Jessica. Right. Whoa, come on, guys. This is brilliant. Who's, who's first? Jessica's first. Right. This king said to his people, Look, the people of Israel are too many and too strong for us to handle. We must plot against them. If we don't and war breaks out, they might join our enemies, fight us, and escape. So the Egyptians made life hard for the Israelites. They put slave masters over them and forced them to build cities for the king. But, the, but still, the Israelites multiplied. So the Egyptians forced the Israelites to work even harder, making bricks and working in the fields. There were two Israelite nurses named Sephara and Pua. 
They helped the Israelite women give birth to their babies. The king said to the nurses, when you are helping the Israelite women watch, if it is a boy, kill it. But the nurses did not do as the king told them. They let the babies live. So the king sent for the nurses. He said, why did you do this? Why did you let the boys live? The nurses said to him, the women are strong and give birth to their babies before we can get there. God was good to the nurses and the people of Israel continued to grow in number. So the king commanded all his people, every time a boy is born to the Israelites, you must throw him into the river Nile. A woman called Jacobet gave birth to a son. She saw how wonderful the baby was and she hid him. But after three months, she was not able to hide the baby any longer. So she got a basket made of reeds and covered it with tar so that it would float. She put the baby in the basket and put the basket among the reeds at the edge of the Nile River. The baby's sister stood watching nearby. She wanted to see what would happen to him. Then the daughter of the king of Egypt came to the river to bathe. She saw the basket in the reeds the princess opened the basket and saw the baby boy. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. She said, this is one of the Israelite babies. Then the baby sister asked the princess, would you like me to find an Israelite woman to nurse the baby for you? The princess said, yes, please. So the girl went and got the baby's own mother. After the child had grown older, his mother took him back to the princess. The princess adopted the baby as her own own son and named him Moses because she had pulled him out of the water. Thanks guys. Beautifully read. Thank you ever so much. There should have been an accompanying uh, pictures for all of that but uh, it sort of didn't format properly and failed. But anyway, here's Steph. Here I am. <laughs> oh, here I am but I've lost my piece of paper. <laughs> so many technical hitches. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you very much. Did you want that? No, no, no that's fine. <laughs> so we're thinking, I don't know if I've got a, a, a slideshow. Maybe that didn't work either. Has it worked? <laughs> Should have some pictures for you. Yeah, thank you very much for that lovely reading. What a lovely story of Moses for us. I should have a picture of me and my mum. <laughs> you'll have to imagine someone looking just like me, but a little bit older, and then, and then you'll, you'll see my mum. Because everyone says that we look very alike. It's a good day to thank God for our mums. But just as Matt was saying, it's not just our mums who show us love and care. Um, there's lots of other people that can show love and care for us. For Moses, there were five different heroic women in his life. And they were the nurses, Shifra and Pua. Very good reading from Jessica there on those tricky names. Um, and there was Moses' mother, Jochebed. There was also Miriam, his sister, and the princess of Egypt. And they all showed love to Moses in one way or another. Now, the first way they showed love was in sacrifice. I need some volunteers to come and help me show sacrifice. Oh, I've only got one volunteer. Come on then, Izzy. I, I need one more volunteer. Who would like to come and show sacrifice? Lola, come on, come and show us. Right, it's not painful, don't worry. Okay. Now, I'm gonna give you these sweets. And I'm going to give you, I see you all wish you'd volunteered now, and I'm going to give you a cup each, and all I want you to do is share them out between each other. So you can do that while I carry on talking. So sharing can be a bit difficult depending on what it is you're sharing. If someone said, can you share out your Brussels sprouts? Well, it wouldn't be a problem, would it? 
Um, and it depends who you're sharing with. If you're friends with somebody, it's quite, it's not too difficult to share. Have you shared them all out? One for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. Excellent. Now, sacrifice is even harder than sharing. Sacrifice would be one of you saying, I'm going to give you all of my sweets. Would any of you like to sacrifice? You would? Oh, I'm very surprised by that. Oh, well, I didn't expect that you would sacrifice, but thank you very much. I think you probably should share when you get back to your seat with her. <laughs> Go on, you can sit back down. Sacrifice is giving up something that is valuable to you. And it's hard even to sacrifice your sweets for somebody. But for, most, for the nurses in our story, they had, to, they had to be willing to give up their safety and even their lives. Because the king of Egypt, the pharaoh, said, you need to kill all of the babies. But they wouldn't do it because they loved God and they loved the women they were looking after. And they said, we will be willing to give up our safety for the babies. And Jochebed, what a difficult thing that she had to give up. She had to give up Moses, her son, because she knew she loved him so much that she knew he wouldn't be able to live. Very nice. Okay, looks like you got this. Very <laughs> good. Oh, oh, look out, look That's out. fear. He's really That's good at keeping my Easy, easy, huh? Oh, we're good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, well, at least it started working. <laughs> I don't know if I should wait for you or carry on. Carry on, carry on. Okie doke. <laughs> so, yes. So the nurses um, sacrificed. They were willing to give up their lives and their safety for the sake of the babies. And Jochebed was willing to give up Moses, not knowing if she would ever see him again when she put him onto the river. Now, the next way that we see love shown is in watching over. And that's Miriam who watches over her baby brother Moses. Now, you've had a sneak preview already. I don't know if anyone has seen Inside Out before. Has anyone seen? Oh, we've got some nods here. Um, and Very this is a video nice. showing. Very nice. Okay. Looks showing like watching this. over. Oh, that's right. Oh, look out. That's fear. He's really good at keeping Riley safe. Easy, easy, huh? Bye back! Oh, we're good. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we're back. <laughs> Here we go. All right, open. Hmm, this looks new. Think it's safe? What is it? Uh, okay, uh, caution. There is a dangerous smell, people. Hold on, what is that? This is disgust. She basically keeps Riley from being poisoned, physically and socially. That is not brightly colored or shaped like a dinosaur. Hold on, guys. It's broccoli! <laughs> I just saved our lives. Mm. Yeah, you're welcome. Riley, if you don't eat your dinner, you're not going to get any dessert. Wait, did he just say we couldn't have dessert? That's anger. He cares very deeply about things being fair. So that's how you want to play it, old man? No dessert? Oh, sure. We'll eat our dinner right after you eat this. Ah! Hey, hey, here comes an airplane. Ah! Oh, airplane. We got an airplane, everybody. <gasps> It's quite fun to imagine us having emotions in our heads that watch over us. But the truth is, we need someone bigger and stronger than us to watch over and protect. And for Moses, that person was Miriam, his sister. Can you just go away? We're not going to have that one just yet. <laughs> so we're going to have... Um, so, uh -huh. <laughs> I'm being gestured at. <laughs> So um, Miriam watches over her brother and does such an amazing job of watching over that she is able to come up with a plan. She says to the princess, um, let me find a woman to look after the baby for you. And so Moses is able to return to his family until he's probably about three or four years old. And that's all because of the love that his sister shows him by watching over him. And... Uh, our last heroic woman is the Egyptian princess, and we don't even know her name. But the way that she showed love to Moses is through adopting him. Now, I thought we need a clip to show one of the most famous bears in Britain and how he found his family. Oh. I need to look presentable. That's so boring. Well, I'm 
sorry you all feel like that, but it was my week to choose, and personally, I enjoyed the Victorian wool experience. Well, at least you spent some time together as a family. Oh, stranger danger. What? Keep your eyes down. There's some sort of bear over there, probably what? selling something. Good evening. No, thank you. Oh, dear. Mm. Must be doing something wrong. Hello there. Mary. Oh. Hello. Mum. Uh. I hope you don't mind me asking, but shouldn't you be at home? Oh, yes, I should. But I haven't quite worked out how to find one. Well, where are your parents? Oh, they died when I was small. Here we go. All I have left is my aunt. And where's she? Darkest Peru, in the home for retired bears. <laughs> yeah, of course she is. How did you get here? I stowed away in a lifeboat. Cool. And ate marmalade. Did you know bears like marmalade? I didn't even know bears could talk. Oh, well, I'm a very rare bear. There aren't many of us left. And what are you going to do now? Well, I thought I would probably just sleep over there in that bin. That's the spirit. Anyway. Dad! Why don't we find you some help? Oh, yes, please. If you're sure it's no trouble. Of course it isn't. Is it, darling? But he actually shows love in the exact same way as our women in the story. In sacrifice, watching over, and adoption. So the most famous... The most famous verse in the Bible. God gave the most valuable gift to the world, and it says, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him will not die but will have everlasting life. I hope that was right because I did it from memory. <laughs> it should be on the screen, but never mind. Um, and it's not just a love for the world. It's a love that includes every one of us. It's a love for me and a love for you and every single one of us. God shows his love for us in sacrifice, giving up his son. God shows his love for us in watching over us. Um, in Psalm 121, um, it says that God always watches over us, that he doesn't go to sleep. He's always there looking over us with love. And that's a summary of that. <laughs> And then finally, God shows his love for us in adoption. He welcomes us into his family. And he puts his Holy Spirit inside us that cries out, Abba, Father, or, or Dad, our 